All right, folks, as prefaced, Gallery Classic Week coming to the desert with the inaugural event. Got a great guest for episode 78 of the Spicer Speaking Podcast. Gentleman who spent about a quarter century cutting his teeth on various tours around the world. Had some degree of success in those ventures. Three wins on the PGA Tour of Australia. Four wins on uh, what is now the Corn Ferry Tour. A couple of wins on the Canadian Tour. But it wasn't until his venture into PGA Tour champions that this gentleman really found his groove. Started with the Monday qualifier back in 2021 to segue to a victory before a total explosion last year with four wins on PGA Tour champions, not to mention uh, appearances in a couple of playoffs. That deservedly led to his being named by his peers as PGA Tour champions player of the year. Winner of the Charles Schwab Cup and, oh, Golf Writers Association, uh, PGA Tour Champions Player of the Year. And he had my vote for that as a GWAA member. <laughs> All that prefaced by way of New Zealand. Of course, he's here in the desert now. We welcome Stephen Alker to the Spicer Speaking Podcast. Hello, Stephen. How are you doing this morning? Thank you for having me. And you've done your homework there, too. I'm impressed. If nothing else, I try to do uh, some adroit <laughs> research uh, <laughs> and at least have that doubt, my man. But all that Good all stuff. that prefaced uh, from last year, it was just, uh, it, what, what others have described. And I know you've been asked about this a lot, but just a pretty unbelievable career renaissance, uh, what you yeah. offered last year. Have you kind of caught your breath from all that success from last season? Yeah. I mean, it's 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 been a strange start to the year. Obviously, um, you know, you probably heard I, I lost my caddy Sam, but um, that, that's a whole that's a whole other subject. But uh, yeah, just carrying on from where um, you know twenty twenty one, the end where I'd won there and I qualified for, for Schwab Cup finals, and it just kind of uh, you know it just just carried on from from twenty twenty one, and uh, yeah, I mean amazing year last year and especially kind of where I've come from and just grinding on the Corn Ferry Tour and, you know, uh, not having much success out in the PGA Tour at all. So, yeah, just a just a, a big turnaround. Just, you know, I think obviously wanting to play out on the Champions Tour. Uh, being amongst these guys, it's, it's inspiring, you know, uh, to be with yeah, the legends and, and Hall of Famers. So, yeah, it's um, it's been quite a turnaround. And have I, to answer your question, have I, kind of uh, grasp at all um and probably not really to be honest you know still still just out here kind of focused on trying to win some tournaments and and compete with these guys try and keep up with bernard langer you know <laughs> he's still going strong um it's yeah it's just exciting it's it's, 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 it's exciting i'm enjoying it uh you referenced and i guess among my research could be editorializes unfortunate research you referenced the passing of your caddy something that'll certainly get to a bit later in this segment. Sticking with the golf course for now, Stephen, I mean, you referenced Bernhard Langer, uh, no shortage of other playing competitors that you faced off with over the years, whether in your stints on the PGA Tour, whether in your time uh, on the what was then the, the European Tour, now the DP World Tour. But it wasn't until the Champions Tour that you were not only able mm. to catch these guys, but you were basically able to dominate them. What happened? What changed? How did you do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just a combination of things. I mean, you know, lots of people have asked me the question. You know, what, what, what turned it all around? And obviously, you know, as I said, wanting to be out here, wanting to play—that's that's huge. Um, and still wanting to compete. You know, my age, kind of what you know, what I've been through, and not having the success I wanted, and and um, still grinding with the young guys. So that was that was a large part, and obviously, you know, support from from family to you know to keep going, stick at it. Um, but that was another thing, and then just um, you know, fitness was a big thing as well. You know, just to get in the shape into good golf shape, and you know, I've gone from one of the probably short shorter hitters out on the say the Corn Ferry Tour, um, and, and now you know I'm kind of in the top fifteen, top twenty hitters out here. So you know, I've got enough length to play the courses and be very competitive. Um, that that's, that's showed. So yeah, you know, you can't really put this your finger on one thing. It's just it's a combination of things, and 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 as I said, been inspired and and really been excited to to play. Um, that that's been huge as well. You referenced uh, 
staying in shape. You referenced the fitness. Anything particular uh, that you're doing? We've got a fit listenership here on the Spicer Speaking <laughs> Podcast. How are you staying in shape? What in particular have you done uh, to keep your body so fit? In particular, you know, I, I just got some direction, to be honest. Um, I just got a guy who um, really kind of screened me and got me where I needed to, like the right stuff to work on, got me pointed in the right direction um and, and got golf strong and, and just got stronger as well and and you know obviously getting older as we get older we lose that muscle mass and it's just maintaining it's very hard to to gain when you get to to our age so it, it's maintaining and then you know obviously having strong golf muscles and um and, and i'm changing out my uh, routine my program con consistently six to eight weeks so there's always it's always fresh it's always new working on stuff that i need to as to how my body is right now in, in the moment and um and that's helped uh, a big deal and then obviously recovery you know there's all those things so it's actually you know I'm, my program is, is longer than it used to be yeah. um just to just for preparation and and um warm down and and all that sort of stuff so Couple but it, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun to watch as well. Um, yeah. And a couple of things uh, that you additionally referenced, Stephen, was uh, your distance. I mean, in 2023, there is no shortage of distance anymore on the PGA Tour champions. There are a lot of guys that still hit it over 300. Tour average oh, yeah. is around 380. One thing I've read about you I wanted to clarify, do you hit the ball as far or farther as you did upwards of 20 years ago? I think so. Yeah, I do. You know, obviously there's the, the change in bowling clubs and things, but you know, I, I think I talked about that maintaining. Yeah, you know, that that's that's been huge, and I think uh, you know, hopefully I'm in the game for another eight, nine, ten years, um, and and you know, just can maintain that. Obviously, you got guys like Padre come out. There's going to be some guys coming out every year who're going to. You know, still be hitting it long. You got Padre VJ still hits it out there, and Retief Goose, and there's still a you know, handful of guys who can, you know, just say get it, get it over 300 pretty easy. So um, on certain courses, yeah, that that certainly helps. It shows, you know. So um, if I can, uh, just as I said, maintain and 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 stay strong, yeah, that's that's huge out here. Talk about a little of the vibe on the PGA Tour champions. It's a it's a tour rather mm. that I've had pleasure to cover. A lot in the past, the former 3M championship back in the Twin Cities before it became the 3N Open, now on the PGA Tour. As a Minnesota native, I used to cover that previous event a lot. And it's interesting, Stephen, in that the vibe on PGA Tour champions, it can be relaxed. There's a lot of chatter and fan interaction, a lot more smiles. Mm -hmm. Not as serious as we see here for the American Express uh, stop on the PGA Tour where these guys are playing for a million dollars. Not as serious as we've come accustomed to in 51 years of a former LPGA major at Mission yeah. Hills Country Club. But at the same time, come Sunday or the back nine on Sunday in PGA Tour Champions, it's just as serious as it gets with those other tours. How do you enjoy or how do you balance that kind of little more laid back vibe, but also when it's time to flip the switch and get serious? Yeah, you know, I, I like it. I've always been quite a um serious intense golfer if you like and um there's that that nice uh balance as you that as you put it of the the serious and the not so serious and um it just kind of feels you know you've only got you know 80 guys out here 78 guys playing every week and it's um kind of feels like more of a family out here more of a connected group um of what we're trying to do you know trying to still trying to promote the game and and you know we're we're showcasing um you know golf is our age but uh, you know not trying to be too serious and have a lot of fan interaction there's a lot of social media stuff we do out here as well so um yeah that's 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 been exciting part of it for me to be honest just to kind of loosen up and 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 try some new things and, and interact a little bit more um but as you say you know come the stretch and, and sunday you're in the heat um yeah it's all it's all go you know it's it's uh you want to try and get the w so um it, it's it's been fun that, that that's that's the only way I, I can describe it as it's just been fun and to get to know the guys better too because i've played on the pga tour and the corn ferry and 
you know, as you say, it's a little more intense and you don't get to know the guys as well. And I feel like um, um, at this stage of, of their careers, you know, the Hall of Famers and, and, and the big guns have kind of loosened up a little bit in their old age. And, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Yeah. They're just more approachable. You know, I'm, I, I've been, um, they've been fantastic uh, just approaching these guys and trying to pick their brain a little bit and, and talk about their, you know, previous careers and uh, events they've played and asking questions like the, about the President's Cup and the Ryder Cup and stuff like that. It's really cool. And I never kind of got into that side so much uh, when I was on the, you know, playing the bigger tour. So, um, yeah, that, that's been exciting too and, and get to know the guys a little bit better. As a, a reference or a reference again to how you got here, uh, when I see a, a career like yours and your your season last year was so inspiring, Stephen, um, I find oh, empathy in that. I mean, in the career path that this isn't about me, but the career path that I have chosen as a writer and a broadcaster, I've been doing it. You and I are not dissimilar in age. I've been doing it for a while. And there's no shortage of bumps in the road. There are no shortage of people sure. along the way who have told me, you know, maybe you should quit, man. Maybe you should go do this instead. This is hard. Maybe you should go to law school. I mean, I've had people over yeah. the years tell me to, to kind of throw in the towel a lot of times. And like yourself, you experienced some pretty serious bumps in the road in your playing career. I watched a couple of videos, one in particular, of you speaking uh, with your wife. And there was some serious emotion and a reference to Team Elker. And I believe you have that on your golf bag. Mm -hmm. You must have some serious familial support to have stuck with the game through some of those low times to get where you are today oh absolutely i mean that's that's key and and not just me you know um everybody out here has gone through some hardship and and just grinding and and personal stuff i mean it, it just that's just life you know so um from, from where i've come and, and and got to yeah you just you kind of look back and you kind of need to look back i think and go you know gee i'm, I'm glad i did this and i should, i should have done that um and, and you kind of learn from that and um hopefully you know teach your kids something um and and you know just just grow as a person so um for me I, i've been very fortunate just to you know have a great um support with my wife and, and my kids you know to to be out there traveling with me, um, still supporting me. You know, my wife was, um, you know, the, the one to get, told me, get it, get out there, get going, get going, go and qualify. Let's, let's start rolling. And I'm like, well, I'm in, I'm in an hour and should I do this? Should I do this one? Should I do that one? She said, no, let's go. And, you know, after, you know, 25 years of marriage, hell, I mean, not many, not many wives would, they go out, get out in the golf course, and get your ass in the gear and go and play and 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 have some fun and try and see what it's all about. So that was the plan, um, and and the rest is history. So, but but to have that support for, for that long and 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 you know the struggles we went through, um, you know, uh, you know people have asked me, um, you know, would you have done something else? I mean, you were at the point where you would you chucked it in. I I, I always say. No, I never got to that point. I never got to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm done with golf. I think if I had, I might have done something different in the in the golf circles, or um, or as well as, but to actually just chuck it in, no, I don't. I don't think I got to that point. You know, because be of something. because of the support. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and concurrent to that, there must be something within yourself that. Let me put it this way, Stephen. I mean, out here in the desert. There are great players everywhere, everywhere in the desert. You can go to any golf course and find scratch players all over the place. You can find plus handicaps all over the place. And many, many of these men or yeah. women, they made a run at pro golf and gave it two, three, four years. Or they were great college players, but it was too hard. They threw in the towel. It was too frustrating. But mm. for you, there must be something, that fortitude, that metal within yourself that never lets you quit. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, the perseverance um, is is huge. You got to, you know, obviously have a have a goal. But um, I think from a young age, and and you know, both my parents were kind of grinders, you know, just working class people, and um, that was kind of installed in me pretty pretty early. 
Um, so that was one thing. But just, um, you know, just wanting to, um, you know, I'm competitive anyway, but just be the best player that I can be. You know, I, I never really got caught up in, um, you know, how good other players were or, um, you know, you, you see good players and you go, wow, I'm fantastic. And, and can I reach that level? You're going to have, you know, realistic goals. But um, yeah, I, I I just I've always just enjoyed playing the game and trying to get a little bit better and um, you know just just put myself up against the best and just see what you've got you know and you know maybe at the PGA Tour level I just didn't have um, I wasn't out there long enough to to actually really improve and and improve myself um, that I kind of had it deep down um, you know maybe length held me back and and a few things but. Um, I you know I gave it a shot. You know I was out there and I, I gave it a shot. And now, to me, this is just second career out here in the champions. Second chance. That's that's exactly what it is. It's a second chance. And um, you know I'm just trying to make the most of it. Stephen, of course, with life's flows come the ebbs, as you reference at the onset of this visit. Some super sad, really tragically sad news last month um your longtime caddy i believe of four years sam workman passed away at yeah. a very young age of cancer i believe just 55 years old i could mm -hmm. come up with a fancy way to ask you this man but more plainly stated how you doing yeah um doing we, we, i think i think we're a whole family and, and and i think sam's family as well it's just so in shock i mean we had a Super day out here yesterday in, in honor of Sam uh, with the caddies and, and his sister Michelle was here. Um, and we had a super day, we had a turn out of like 50 or 70 guys, you know, players, caddies, uh, officials, you know, all come out and, and played and got behind the day. And I think we raised something like twenty five thousand dollars for first team, I and mean, it was a it was amazing. So, um, you know. That that to have that support for like for Sam's family and and just kind of what we've been through is is incredible, and just shows like you know the guys out here and the champions and the caddies and just how much kind of a, more of a family it is. So, um, but yeah, you know I'm I'm doing okay. You know I'm 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 looking amazing support out here for 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 what's what's happened and for Sam's family and um. Just you know, me myself, I'm, I'm you know, I'm honestly looking for a guy, um, you know, and it, it's you know, Sam's gonna be hard to replace, um, but um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it's just strange. You miss the small things like you know, things he says, and just just having having him there, you know, um, so and at the moment, I'm just you know, I'm doing fill-ins. I think my wife is gonna do one in a couple of weeks to and I one last year in Houston. Uh, yeah, you know, I got my trainer this week, so. I'm just at the moment. I'm just slowly in the process of, of looking for someone. So, um, if you're free, you're looking for you. You want to you want a job? <laughs> I did. Uh, I did. I did loop last year in an Epson tour event. Oh, yeah. there you go. Thank yeah. you. Got got uh, got an award for so, uh, the article yeah, you know, I wrote just, about. Uh, it. Just going through the process of, of looking for someone, but um, yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll get there eventually. But uh, but it be every every thorny myth for sure. Uh, should uh, specify that uh, the San Antonio first tee with which uh, uh, I believe Sam was affiliated received uh, several funds from the event yesterday at Mission Hills, along with the uh, first tee of the Coachella Valley received some of yeah. those funds as well. Friends, you're tuning in to episode 78 of the Spicer Speaking podcast. My guest is Stephen Alker competing in the inaugural gallery classic this week. The reigning PGA Tour Champions Player of the Year, winner of the Charles Schwab Cup. Stephen will be competing along the likes of Bernhard Langer, Fred Couples, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, John Daly, Retief Goosen. The list goes on and on of legends that are going to be in the desert this week. I'll have the pleasure of being out there covering at the event for several days for Golf News Net. You can find those articles online at the Golf News Net. Stephen, interesting segue in unofficial baton passes referenced the LPGA played on this golf course uh, for the first major of the season every year for 51 years. That tournament yeah. is gone. It's off to Houston. And we're now so enthused to have PGA Tour champions in our desert on the same golf course. It was basically the same date. It's like a week earlier than we were used to every year. Uh, one of the questions that was asked a lot at the media day and has been asked in recent months is, how many players in your uh, field of, I want to say, 78 
have ever played this golf course before. Previous to yesterday, had you ever played the Dinah Shore tournament course before? No, I, I hadn't personally. Um, so I just got to see a little bit of it yesterday driving around. Um, but not probably not too many. Um, you know, maybe the guys in, in Arizona um, out there have played it. Um, I know Freddie has, has lived in this area and maybe still does, I think. Um, yep. He probably has. You know, there's a few guys. But, yeah, I, I don't know what the percentage have played it, but probably not that many. Um, so... You know, first time golf course, it might be, you know, a, a little different. We got some I think there's some new tees out there and kind of stretch it out a little bit for us. But yeah, it looks good. it looks in great shape. I mean, it's probably one of the better um conditioned courses we'll play all year. People that have watched or covered or follow or attended the event for the better part of a half century. I mean, we're so used to watching how the ladies played this course and we got used to where balls would end up and what approaches would look like and where pin placements were people out here yeah. very schooled on how this golf course played i got i know just just one round in the books for you but did you get a sense of the nuance of this golf course that's how i always felt that it played that there is some pretty distinct nuance to this course yeah there is um it kind of surprised me like the the, the rolling fairways you know you're kind of heading into over little humps and, and hills and um the lines off the tee are, you know, you, you're going to get get a good line to, to actually hit some fairways. So um, that's kind of what I noticed. And then and the greens are kind of you know, subtly um, slopey, slopey, um, surprisingly yeah. slopey in places. So, um, yeah, it's it's. Just, I mean, I, I liked it, what, what I saw yesterday. I mean, I didn't play every hole. I just played a, a few shots for guys here and there. They're playing a, a shamble, so I kind of help, help groups out now and again if I could. But uh, yeah, no, I, I liked it. it. Was it was playing pretty firm? Obviously, with the rain this morning, it'll soften things up. But it was playing firmish, so um, that, that that's always good when we get a, a firmer golf course. Did you get a sense? And this has been some of the compare and contrast with how the ladies played it or the ladies scored. And sometimes on PGA Tour champions, we see easier courses or easier course setups. We're in the fifty-four hole events. Guys are chasing twenty under. And we saw like last week at the Hogue Classic. At Newport Beach CC, where it may be chasing 10 under, 12 under. To me, it's just kind of a guess. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. This kind of feels like a 12, 13, 14, 15 under kind of event. I don't know if you got a sense of that yesterday, what the scoring might be like. Yeah, um, kind of hard to say. I mean, obviously, if we, if we get a couple of days of rain, um, it might soften things up. Because the greens were quite firm yesterday. Um but kind of hard to say. I mean, par fives uh, are, are durable, you know. So that's going to be it's going to be huge. Kind of, kind of hard to say. Yeah, if you, I think, you know, you could be right. Kind of that five hundred a day, fifteen under was would probably be a good target. Actually, that seems to be a pretty good target each week. <laughs> you know, you get to 15, 15, 18 under. That's kind of what you got to do to have a chance to win. So um, that would be something pretty pretty good to shoot at. But um, I think it's it's always for me personally. It's always Great to come to a golf course we haven't been, um, and you know, new golf course, new, uh, new vicinity, um, and, and just the whole area. I haven't been back here for six or seven years, uh, um, since the, the Amex. So it's nice to be back here and just play a different golf course too. You know, it's, it's exciting. I'll ask you lastly today, Stephen. Uh, are you pals with fellow Kiwi Lydia Ko? Um, no, I don't know Lydia very well to be honest. I mean, we, we've, we've messaged on on um, Instagram or whatever it is, uh, a little bit about our success. And, but I, I met her once down in New Zealand. She was playing in the pro at New Zealand Open. This was years ago. Um, so, no, our, our paths don't cross uh, very often. And But but she she's huge down in New Zealand. I mean, just uh, the following down there and, and what she's done. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty neat. And we've got another golfer. Actually, we nearly took out uh, three order of merit titles last year um, um, Ryan Fox was like he's only a few strokes away from um, from taking the title and, and on the European DP World Tour so yeah that would have been um, super special but you know um, two to three is not bad well maybe you should renew that uh, uh, Instagram exchange with Lydia Ko in that uh, she won uh, our event back in 2016 Um uh, back when it was the A&A &A inspiration. And then in 2021, fired the final round uh, 62, lowest round ever in a final round uh, for an LPGA major. 
She had a shot at making a run at a 60 on that Sunday. Uh, she ended up parring the par five home hole, but uh, just an incredible round. So maybe get, get in touch with Lydia and pick her brain a little bugs. bit. Some uh, bugs. Yeah. 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 She, how she bet took I on the Dinosaur Tournament course. I bet she's got some good <laughs> tips for her fellow New Zealander. I'm sure she is. <laughs> Friends, this has been a visit with Stephen Elker. He is the reigning PGA Tour Champions Player of the Year, winner of last year's Charles Schwab Cup. We welcome him to the desert, the inaugural playing of the Gallery Classic this week. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. Really enthused to get out to Mission Hills Country Club and watch you duel alongside other legends of the game this week. Thanks for your time, man. All right. No, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.